The communities surrounding the Black Hills of South Dakota and Wyoming are diverse, so it's no surprise that there are varied stakeholder opinions about how we manage our forests. Often overlooked, however, are the shared core values of these unique individuals. Grounded in appreciation, respect, and admiration of the Black Hills National Forest, these deeply held beliefs are the bedrock of strong, healthy communities. The forest is actually, it's my backyard. I grew up here, this is my home. What drew me to the forest was, I was actually born and raised in Eastern South Dakota. And it was an opportunity to get back closer to family, friends, and be able to uh, work for the Forest Service in public land management. I couldn't help but being drawn to the forest. I've lived many places all over the U.S. and I've always enjoyed recreation. I got drawn to the forest because I, I live here. It was my backyard. Uh, it, I accepted it as, isn't this what everyone has? I continue to be drawn to the forest through my work. I mean, I, I love my job. Uh, I love promoting a healthy forest, um, all aspects of it. Went to forestry school and just fell in love with the idea. I didn't even know what it was at the time, you know, th thinking it was being a, a ranger or something and, and find out that no, it's this whole world of biology and science and managing the forest and being out there every day. When my family was growing up here, we would take them out to the lakes and the streams and the hiking trails. And it's just the diversity of experiences that we have here in the Black Hills that really is magic. The appeal to the Black Hills National Forest is really the uh, variety of the work that goes on in this forest. We really kind of embody multiple use, recreation, mining, uh, wildlife, water, timber management, forest management. So it's just this um, wide variety of work that happens on the Black Hills National Forest. Promoting a healthy forest is work that can never be called done. It's a group effort that requires all the stakeholders of the forest to work diligently to keep the forest health in check. We're all stakeholders of the forest, and we may have different views, but we all, we all love the forest and we all want to be a part of it. And that's what's the beauty of it, is we can all bring our own different opinions to it and come together as a community and decide what is best for a forest and how can we save this for generations to come. We have many diverse stakeholders here in the National Forest that range from grazing permittees to people that work in the wood products industry to recreationists that span the gamut from horseback riders to OHV enthusiasts and those people that enjoy hiking, biking, fishing, hunting. And so there's a, a very wide collective group that we work with and it varies um, you know, year by year or interest by interest in terms of how people get involved. The stakeholders of the forest would be about three groups, I think. The Native Americans who have a vested interest in their culture and their history in the Black Hills. Uh, recreationists, people who enjoy hiking and cycling and kayaking, uh, boating, fishing, all sorts of activities in the Black Hills. Uh, also, as part of the local group, would be the companies that have interests in terms of uh, the activities that relate to those recreation interests, which would be accommodation, tourist attractions, and of course the logging and mining companies. And then another group would be the tourists who come here because of the special area and who really don't have a vested interest in preserving this place because they can go home and enjoy their own place afterwards. But I would hope that they do treasure this as well and would like to come back and see the special places that they enjoyed. The Black Hills National Forest has a lot of stakeholders. The tourism industry is really big and the Black Hills National Forest is a big part of that. We, every summer we get millions of people that come here and the Black Hills National Forest is, is one of the reasons why they come here. So recreation, that's a big part of it. Um, and then there's also just the people like me and others that live here and enjoy it all year round. And of course, there's all the other stakeholders, you know, the, the, the ranchers, the uh, permittees that run cows on the forest. And of course, there's the timber industry. And now a big, a big part is all these uh, OHV groups and operators. Um, that, that seems to be a growing thing. So um, there's numerous stakeholders here. This is public land. We're stakeholders. 
within the greater public, you know, are as many different uh, subgroups. You know, we've got industry, we've got agriculture, we've got recreation. All these things work together to make the great forest that we all enjoy. And they have to continue to work together or else we won't have the forest that we enjoy. We all agree that a thriving community of stakeholders with input will ultimately garner a positive impact to forest health and bolster the long-term goals of the community effort. I think when you, when, you, when you look over all of the stakeholders, we might disagree on the methods used to sustain all forests. Opinions might differ, but we all want the overall health of the forest to continue on. We want it to last forever. What's special about the Black Hills National Forest to me is really two things, and that is the uh, multiple use that we um, do practice on the, on the National Forest. It, it serves so many different uses, and uh, also the um, thread, again, of conservation and sustainability with uh, providing for not only current folks, the public right now, but future generations to come that will visit the forest. The Black Hills National Forest is really special to all the stakeholders because of, you know, the abundance, but also because of the proximity. You know, it, it's right out our back door. It's full of, you know, cities and towns and residences, um, and we all have immediate access to the Black Hills National Forest. This forest has a long history in management. Over the years, we've all worked together to find the balance between all the different interests and needs that this forest has to produce for everybody. And that's, that's really what makes this stakeholder group unique. Well, I think it's connection to the land and the values that the land provides to um, those diverse interests. People are really uh, passionate about the forest in terms of, of what it looks and what it provides. With each stakeholder group having its own voice and its own goals in mind for the forest health, for the future of the forest's sake, it's important that everyone's voice is heard and all options are looked at carefully. I think we all agree on that we really want what is best for the forest. Nobody wants it to go away. I think people on, on both sides um, are really any spectrum that has to do with the forest. We all want the best for it when we want the overall health. We want it to carry on forever. And one of the, the aspects about the forest here is because it's so accessible, because it's an island in the plains, so many people come here to enjoy it. And that puts pressures on various aspects of this environment. You know, during this planning process, it's very important for people to voice their opinions, but it's also important to listen to the other stakeholders and realize we all have a part in this, we all have a stake in this, and that we need to get together, voice our opinions, but also listen. And in some sense, that's what the National Advisory Board did, is it helped the stakeholders to sit there and listen to the other stakeholders. Uh, certainly voice your own opinion, but getting your opinion in to the Forest Service during this planning process is very important. We all have an opinion, uh, and don't just voice your opinion on what you don't like, voice your opinion on what you would like to see happen. I think the common denominator with everyone is uh, to have a good, healthy forest. Some people just don't know how to get that, but I think everybody wants to have a healthy forest. I think all the stakeholders on the Black Hills National Forest have many, many points of disagreement, but what we all definitely agree on is that we want the best for the forest. You gotta have conversation and you have to commit to listening to each other. A lot of people wanna talk and say their point of view, but they're not too ready to listen. And I would say that's on all sides. So there just needs to be a real commitment to working together. And if we don't, we'll all pay a price for it. So I hope we can get there. The big question is, how do we get there? Since we're in the process of creating the management plan for the next 20 possibly plus years in our forest, I hope we're at a spot where the stakeholders are able to be working forward on the individual items of that plan. How do we get to the future that I'm envisioning for the forest? I think we do that through cooperation and collaboration. Sometimes we have to be willing to compromise, but in the end, we can all come together and come up with 
that management uh, that brings the best of us and brings the best of our forest together. Um, so three to five years out, uh, I really hope that we have a um, completed or nearly finished new forest plan that will guide management on the Black Hills for the next uh, 15 to 20 years out. How do we get to this future of preserving the, the forest? Well, I think it's really important to let the Forest Service do their job. We are involved now with a new forest plan. We're in the early stages of developing a forest plan for the future. And I would hope that all stakeholders have input into that. Certainly the Norbeck Society has, and we are, have produced uh, an extensive document guiding, hopefully, the Forest Service into the future as to what should be done to preserve this place. I would say in, in three to five years from now, I hope that we just continue talking about the forest. I think that the fact we're having conversations in general is a positive thing. Looking forward uh, for the next three to five years, one of the significant things that's going to happen is implementation of a new forest plan, um, which will, uh, the forest plan will set the foundation blueprint of how we manage the forest into the future. To get there is going to take a lot of public involvement, stakeholder, collaborator involvement as we go through the NEPA process for revision of the forest plan. In three to five years, I would hope we could do a little bit less planning and a little bit more implementing. I would hope that we could be a little bit less reactive and a little bit more proactive. We get there by starting at ground zero. We, we have to start with this common denominator. This is, if we all care about the Black Hills National Forest, that has to be the foundation for where we go forward. And then we have to be willing to hear each other out about what our expectations are, um, our backgrounds, what we think the future is, and then and really find a common pathway. There is no doubt this forest is loved by many, and the overall consensus is everyone's looking out for the forest. Yeah, you know, the common thread through all the collaborators and stakeholders is the passion that they have for the land and the connection to these public lands. Uh, I think that's what they can agree about is that they care deeply about this national forest and the values that it provides for them as well as to other stakeholders.